This is What Could Have Been, a series on the channel where we take a look at players who were supposed to be really good and who looked towards having some very positive impacts with their hockey teams, but just were never really able to get it together with the teams that they were drafted by and currently, in this case, in the NHL in general. Today, we're continuing off of the 2013 NHL Entry Draft. Last time we made a video like this, we talked about Hunter Shinkarik, what he was supposed to be, and what he ended up becoming, and today we're sticking with that draft class and sticking with the same team as we talk about a Vancouver Canucks prospect from the third round of the 2013 draft. Let's talk today about Cole Castles. Castles is a guy that the Vancouver Canucks drafted in the third round, 85th overall in the 2013 NHL Entry Draft. Immediately after getting drafted, Canucks fans were pretty excited because Cole Castles' father, Andrew Castles, was indeed a former Vancouver Canuck. He played with the Canucks in the early 2000s. He was there during the Naslin and Bertuzzi years before the West Coast Express really started blooming. But Andrew Castles was indeed a very notable Vancouver Canucks player when he was here. He had 160-something total points in three years with Vancouver, which really is not bad. That's pretty gosh darn good. But Cole Castles was Andrew Castles' son, being drafted straight out of the Oshawa General System, getting 43 points in 64 games in his draft year. Now, some people were a little bit surprised because some outlets like Future Considerations, for example, they had Cole Castles at 103rd overall. So to see him go 85th was a little bit of a stretch, but it was a draft pick that I remember seeing a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans actually be pretty happy about. The next few years were really good for Cole Castles, as in his draft plus one year, he had 73 points in 61 games, and in his draft plus two year, he had 81 points in 54 games. Now, his draft plus two year is where he really started to explode. At this time, Cole Castles was establishing himself as one of the better two-way centermen in the entire OHL. Sure, he was 19, but this was a man playing amongst boys in this year, and it was a season that a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans were so, so hyped about. The two-way ability started to show off really well in both ends of the ice, being a good penalty killer, really solid defensively-minded center, while also having a crazy good scoring touch, getting those 81 points in 54 games. Then come the playoffs, that's when Cole Castles really started to shine. Just from the numbers, he had 31 points in 21 games played, which is great. That's amazing. But the thing is, Cole Castles led the Oshawa Generals to the OHL Championship in a final series against the Erie Otters. This was in 2014-15, and the Erie Otters had... The guy who probably was the best player in the entire league and Connor McDavid at the time, they had Dylan Strome, they had Alex Dabrinkat, they had the Radish brothers and Travis Dermott, and they also had Kyle Pettit, who was a Vancouver Canucks prospect taken in 2014. But they met in the finals and Canucks fans were kind of like, okay, this could be where Cole Castle's run comes to an end because Connor McDavid is Connor McDavid, Dylan Strome is really good, and the Oshawa Generals won the series 4-1 to and went to the Memorial Cup. Ooh, boy, how did that happen? Well, those remembering that series from 2015 will remember that... McDavid was pretty much playing for his OHL career right here. He was set to being drafted a few months later in the NHL entry draft first overall, and he was going to make the NHL right away. This was McDavid's last chance at getting an OHL championship, and he didn't do it because Cole Castles was on the other side, shutting him down. Now, I say shutting him down, but McDavid did have seven points in that five-game final series, but it wasn't enough, because the Oshawa Generals were able to clog up the middle and score a lot more goals than the Erie Otters, a lot of that having to do with how Cole Castles played number 97. 
In hindsight, the Generals were a bigger team, they were an older team, so maybe today, looking at it on paper, Connor McDavid and Dylan Strome and Debrinkat, those three guys are good, but a bigger team is still a bigger and stronger team. But Cole Castles was the guy who led that charge. He was the alternate captain and the big, big cog in shutting down McDavid, which is what got Canucks fans super, super excited once that 2015 offseason came and went. People started labeling Cole Castles as the McDavid kryptonite. The guy who could come in here and shut down the guy who was probably going to be the best player in the National Hockey League for the next few years. Castles was our guy, and he was the one who would prevent Connor McDavid from doing Connor McDavid things in the city of Vancouver for the next few years of hockey at least. And that's what a lot of Canucks fans were so excited about once Cole Castles made his debut with the Utica Comets, where he had 7 points in 67 games. In the next season, though, he had 11 points in 66 games, and then the season after that, he finally got a little bit better, 26 points in 69 games played. Cole Castles was a guy who, once he made the Utica Comets, you could argue he wasn't really being given the opportunity, but a lot of that does have to do with the idea that Cole Castles just wasn't really that great under what was the Travis Green regime for the Utica Comets. The things that made Cole Castles so great in junior, his two-way ability, his play away from the puck, his ability to shut down star players and manage the flow of the game effectively, it wasn't really there in the AHL during his first time around. Granted, that 26-point year in 69 games in 2017-2018, we did see a little bit of a small resurgence in Cole Castles. A lot of the numbers behind his game and the metrics involved in tracking data were not bad. But it wasn't enough for the Vancouver Canucks fans to confidently say, yes, okay, we're going to keep you. Because he became a free agent... He went to Germany, played for the Grizzly Adams Wolfsburg in the DEL, had 24 points in 50 games, and then he came back to North America, and apparently he's doing pretty well now. He played in the ECHL for the Utah Grizzlies, getting over a point per game. Okay, that's great. Then he got loaned over to the Belleville Senators AHL team, had 8 points in 24 games there. Okay, that's cool. And then he got relocated to the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins, the Pittsburgh Penguins AHL affiliate, and he had 19 points in 28 games with them to end off this year. What the heck is this? Cole Castles is back? No way. Don't tell me that. Cole Castles is a guy who pretty much... Last year, I remember last year, people were saying, oh, he's pretty much done. There's no realistic shot at him becoming an NHL caliber prospect, but like... I mean, he's 24 now, he was just under a point per game with the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins. This is the best he has ever been. He's been progressing upwards, that's true. I don't want to say an NHL future in any capacity is unrealistic, but at the same time, it's not looking likely. Of course, though, as a guy who just came back over from Germany and who worked his way up from the ECHL to an AHL team to another AHL team... It's nice seeing that at least Cole Castles is trying to keep the dream alive, and he's doing a pretty okay job at that. It's funny because when he was the McDavid kryptonite five years ago, people in Vancouver Canucks Nation thought that this guy was going to be a legit middle six, top six kind of center, and... Many projected lineups of the future had the guys like, okay, our first line is going to be Horvat, Shinkarek, and, I don't know, Nicholas Jensen. And then you're going to have, I don't know, uh, Dane Fox on the second line, and uh, Cole Castles on the third line, or maybe put Cole Castles on the first line penalty kill. This was a guy that a lot of Canucks fans legitimately saw as a good NHL caliber prospect who could project like his dad. And while it's unfortunate that that didn't happen, it's cool to see him actually come back from Europe and still prove to North American audiences that he has something to show for and play for in this market. 
So for the future of Cole Castles, I hope he does his best and eventually finds an NHL role someday. It's going to be bad because it's not going to be with Vancouver, but at the same time, I can't deny that the story of Cole Castles being the McDavid kryptonite and giving us this hope all those years ago that Connor McDavid would not come to haunt the Canucks in any capacity as long as this guy was on our team. That was a great story. Really feel good story down here. I hope you enjoyed this video, Sergeant Dietrich 99, and bye. <laughs>